Hi, my name is Martin. I'm a gamer. So, uh, it's been five years since I last did a major upgrade on my gaming rig and it's time for me to, yeah, step up. So this uh, is stuff I bought for building myself a new high-end gamer PC. Uh, so what is high-end for me on a scale of 1 to 10? I would say that this rig is gonna be like an 8. Um, and we can come back to why I'm, I'm setting that, uh, yeah, that number. But let's just quickly run through the components of, uh, of what I'm doing here. So I play uh, stuff like CSGO, first-person shooter games, but also VR flight simulator games. And since I'm, I'm primarily a gamer and secondary also do video editing and stuff like that, I've gone the Intel route uh, instead of choosing the more price attractive um, AMD route. Uh, so. Uh, Intel will still give you a little edge in games uh, compared to, to AMD, so hence I've optimized uh, in that direction and gone with the Intel i9 9900K series uh, for the CPU. Uh, for cooling of that CPU, I've uh, chosen a water cooler solution from NZXT. It's the Kraken X6, X62, which would be a first for me uh, going down the water cooler. Uh, route. This is a so-called AIO all-in-one, uh, which means it's a, it's a closed loop, uh, so much easier for new uh, beginners uh, like me on, on the water cooling. The motherboard is from ASUS, it's the Z390 Plus, uh, which supports this uh, series uh, and has uh, room for two M2 discs, uh, which I only bought one for now. It's the Samsung 970 EVO Plus. Uh, one gig edition, sorry, one terabyte edition, and uh, the, on the memory side we have 32 gigs of uh, Corsair Dominator Platinum. Uh, it's the RGB series. Um, on the graphics card side we have a GeForce 280 Super from Palette, and the PSU is from Corsair. It's the TX 750M. And the case is also from NZXT, it's the H500. Right, so back to the 8 out of 10 scale. Uh, this is around $3,000 worth of stuff. Uh, and if I were to uh, build the rig, I would term as a 9. I would say I would uh, ramp up the graphic card even further to the 2080 Ti. Uh, and if we were to go com completely uh, bonkers, uh, then you would uh, take two of the 2080 Ti graphic cards, put them in an SLI configuration, which would also mean that I would have to change the motherboard since this does not support SLI. I would also uh, take an additional uh, M2 disk. Um, that would probably be like, uh, yeah, and we could go with a, uh, uh, open loop uh, water cooler solution for a uh, custom uh, yeah, solution from like Corsair or stuff like that, which alone costs yeah, around a thousand dollars just for the water cooling part. So that setup would be, yeah, that would be a 10 for me. But the SLI part really doesn't make sense anymore. A lot of games don't even support it, and, and those who do only give like minor uh, advantages, and it's usually something that happens fairly uh, long after um, after game releases so yeah uh, since it's since it is so expensive you know uh, game developers don't really spend a lot of time optimizing their games for stuff like that so you just wind up spending a lot of money on very very uh, few pr uh, percentages of uh, of performance uh, yeah so uh, enough talk really um, perhaps just uh, the VR part yeah so again, uh, that is uh, that is part of the, the the 2080 super decision. If I were only to play uh, stuff like uh, Counter Strike Go and Battlefield One, stuff like that, I would say you should uh, go for a 2070, uh, either super or just the basic series, and save some money. Uh, also, go down from 32 gigabytes of memory to 16 gigabytes of memory because. Games really don't um, uh, benefit from anything above 16 gigabytes of memory. So you can save money if you are not doing video editing and stuff like that for me, like me. Okay, again, enough, enough talk. Let's just uh, start building stuff. 
Okay, let's start out. The first step is to prepare really the case for yeah starting out the build. So this is the NXCT H500. This glass uh, that I'm pulling out now is actually uh, glass and not plastic. Uh, so it gives a better look. And uh, one of the reasons that I've chosen this uh, case is that it has quite good cable management, uh, which I'll just show you here. Um, there we go. So it has this these channels on the back side where you can do all your cable management so that the look inside the the actual case the the part that you see from the glass inside it's uh, is very clean. So this is one of the reasons that I like uh, this case. Uh, and again it's fairly cheap. It's below uh, uh, 100 bucks. So yeah, not uh, expensive if you look at what you get here. So uh, yeah, first things first is uh, prepping the case for mounting the motherboard and uh, the PSU. So all of these connectors uh, is part of the fans that are mounted by default. Uh, there are two 140 uh, millimeter fans mounted. Uh, and I'll supplement that with the water cooler that I'm uh, that I bought uh, also. So this is a SATA drive uh, mount that you can do. You also have I think you can see here a mounting area here for the additional disc, and the PSU a little untraditionally goes in the bottom of the case. Right. Okay. So, we have a little bit of accessories here. Everything from, yeah, that was pretty much it. And then <laughs> a manual, will, which we hopefully will not need, um, at least for this section. But we should put out uh yeah stops and stuff like that so stands for the motherboard so uh, yeah that's pretty much step two okay step one of mounting the motherboard is to mount the shield for the, all of the connectors that the motherboard will expose so inside the cabinet is already pre-mounted these uh, standoffs at different uh, different positions that we need uh, to uh, um, both support the motherboard and also keep it in place uh, with screws. So what I, I need to do now is to make sure if the pre-mounted standoffs are enough, if anyone needs to be removed or if we are lacking anyone but it looks to be let me just see i think there's one that i might need to do something about that one uh, i'm probably gonna need to remove okay so yeah it looks that i need to remove one uh, but the rest should be fine uh, yeah, so I'm just going to do that. Okay, with that in place, we now need to fasten the motherboard to the case by screwing in these screws that are aligned with the standoffs in the case. And we're going to use the screws that came with the case. Okay, motherboard installed. Next step is to mount the CPU. If 
First, we need to open up the latch, like so. And then we unbox this little precious diamond. And let's find where the... You will notice that there is... What am I pointing here? Yeah, so in that corner you will see an alignment. Right, so that's indicated on the the cover that that's in this corner. Okay, so we'll do that alignment. Get that out. Gently insert that. That sits nice and tight. Then like this. Whoops, we need to get that cover out of the way. Get that down here. Job done. Okay, next step is to start mounting the memory modules. So um, I have two modules of uh, 16 gigabyte that we need to mount. If we just easily talk about um, why uh, this memory, yeah, is 16 um, 16 gigabyte each. 3200 uh, megahertz of speed. So you can get memory that goes above 3200 megahertz. So why not uh, go with those? Well, thing is, uh, the percentages uh, of what you gain from going above 3200 megahertz are very, very small. And uh, the price, <laughs> is very, very steep for going about that. So again, this is uh, just uh, common sense here and to spend the money where you actually get uh, the important percentages and, and don't, yeah, overspend on stuff that really doesn't matter. So, you know, usually in our world, uh, a couple of hundred of megahertz uh, really does matter a lot, but uh, not in this instance. So I have two modules and according to the manual, I should mount that in uh, B2A2. So right here I can see that this is B1, this is B2, this is A1 and A2. So these two should be the ones that I should go for. Right. And I'll just open up the sockets here only that way and they should hopefully jump in that for the first one and like so for the second one job done right with memory installed next up is the m2 disk uh, so the reason that an M2 disk is uh, of interest for a guy like me is primarily the video editing that I do. Uh, so all of the rendering files that are uh, being created as you do the final rendering, that creates a lot of I.O. Uh, input output. So it's really interesting if you can have like a super fast disk to, uh, to that. And that is really where an M2 disk shines. So um, I have two options. Uh, I can either go for um, a placement uh, here, which is uh, one of the places, or I can mount it below this 
a heat sink, which is what I'm gonna do. So to uh, keep it, yeah, uh, away from uh, one of the areas uh, in the motherboard where the the heat will be the like the primary area. So uh, yeah, and again, since I have two options, I'll just go for mounting in under the, the heat sink. So we'll just need to remove these two screws to gain access to the M2 socket below. There, right. And then put this back on again. There we go, job done. Okay, and now for the really expensive part. The 2080 Ti Super from Palette. So, uh, there are a lot of T2080 um, Supers out there. So why did I go with the Palette? Well, actually, um, this is one of the, the purchases that I spend the most time on. That's pretty much what it, you get in the box, it, it would seem. Let's just put that there and confirm that there indeed is nothing below. There isn't. So, again, back to the graphics card. Why did I choose this one and not some of the other brands out there? Well, I looked for two things really. Uh, or three price obviously uh, but not that that there is that many uh, the difference is that big really between the different renders but one big thing for me was the connectors this is the standard uh, connector output for if you look at the reference card from uh, Nvidia so you have uh, three display ports one two three one HDMI and one USB-C. The USB-C is the one, <coughs> sorry, the box just fell off. Uh, the USB-C is the one that's interesting for me as uh, this is something that is termed to be uh, used in the uh, future for uh, VR headsets and similar. So I wanted the one with the USB-C connector and uh, surprisingly a lot of the ones uh, for instance from MSI did not have this connector so that was one of the reasons for choosing this one the other thing I looked at is of course the cooling system uh, so do some of them have three some of them have two uh, there aren't again that many tests yet of the 2080 uh, supers out there so uh, and none of the of, of the palette uh, as of yet so uh, yeah uh, this is, uh, this is a little bit based on, you know, reading a lot of specs on, uh, and a little bit of test on the MSI Gaming Trio, which uh, is supposedly too noisy and actually quite loud, even though it has three fans. So yeah, uh, Pallet has decent reviews from some of their other uh, 2080 cards, the non-Super. So I went with that one. But again, yeah, this is actually spending a lot of money on something that I couldn't really find any reviews of, which is a little bit intimidating for a guy like me who likes to prepare for, for purchases like that. But anyway, let's get the plastic off. like so and there we have it so it has this hard rock Let's just turn it around here uh, back plate of uh, aluminum I think this is yeah plasticky I would I would say but feels uh, nice and sturdy so uh, I need to remove one of these uh, plates from the case and let's uh, mount it. Ok, 
Okay, we actually also need to remove this plate in order to fit the graphics card. So with these two removed and the front plate, we should be good. Let's see. There was a click. And it sits nice and tight. Okay. Then we need to get these two, sorry, not those, those two screws to tighten the graphics card and put on the plate again. Okay, so now we have all the main components uh, and are missing the PSU and the CPU fan. Um, so those we will still need to do. But before we do that, I think I'm going to mount the wires from the uh, case, which would be the USB connectors, the fan connectors, stuff like that. So we have that in place before we actually start adding um, the PSU wires uh, and also the the water cooler, will, which will also need connectors. So just not to have a big mess of wires uh, everywhere uh, and figuring out you know, which goes where. I think we're gonna do the, the case wires now before that. Okay, so the first one we have is the case audio connectors. And if I look at my motherboard for the front panel audio connector, it supposedly sits in that corner, which would correlate to down here. So let's try that out. And we can see that the connector has one um, hole that's covered up, which I can use to align it to the actual pins on the motherboard. That's one. Next up is the front panel power buttons and reset buttons and similar. And for that, we reference again to the motherboard guide where we can see that it's in this section and that it's the first uh, section of pins that we need to connect it to. And again, we have a guide with one of the holes being blacked out. So we're gonna try and align that with the pins. There we go. Okay. That was two for two. Let's just keep, get some of the excess wiring out of the way. Then we have the case USB 3 connectors. And I'll just need to reference the motherboard, which I should use here, uh, which would, would be best suited. So again, we reference the manual. Right. So we have two uh, USB 3 uh, connectors on the motherboard, one in the bottom section and one on the side. Uh, I'm gonna go for the bottom section so that I don't have to get the cable in from the side. So let's do that. And again, you'll notice that hopefully uh, that the connector has a guide pin to help me align it correctly. Like so. I think we just need to make the cable a little bit more snug. I'll just do that now, afterwards. Okay, so I rerouted the cable coming from there because the cable could not bend really enough to make it, um, yeah, appropriate for having that mount. So, now we have 
Audio cable connected, front uh, panel connected, SATA 3, sorry, USB 3 connectors from the case connected. We have the CPU connected, graphics card connected. We still haven't mounted the connectors for the two case power supplies, sorry, uh, fans, uh, yet. Um, and I'm going to wait a little bit with that. Uh, and I think we're going to move on to mounting the uh, water cooler. Uh, so that sort of decides which um, connectors on the motherboard that uh, makes most sense for that to connect to. And then we're going to do the fans after that. Okay, time for the water cooler installation. So, if I just take it out here so you can see what we're dealing with here. So this is the pump, this one, and this is the radiator. And then we have two uh, 140 millimeters fan that we mount on the fan. So, we have a couple of options here. Uh, we can do direct or indirect mounting on the radiator of the fans, which uh, really comes down to if the fans are sitting in front or behind the radiator. So my idea for this build, given that this is uh, this part is the front of my of my case, and really there's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of intakes uh, in the front side of the the case. It's mostly coming from the, the, the two sides of the case because the, the front plate is, uh, is pretty much solid. So uh, if I had a bigger case, I would probably put the, the radiator with the two fans blowing uh, in the top of the, the case, which is here, blowing in that direction. But since there's only room for fitting one fan in the, the top of the case, I'm just going to leave the, two, the, the, the fan that's already there by default and have the radiator sitting here uh, and my intention is to blow um, air going in this direction and then out from these two fans. That's uh, sort of the plan here. The trick is then, um, how do we <laughs> turn these uh, these radiators, sorry, fans, so which, which direction is, uh, is what? So my theory <laughs> is that uh, this side is uh, the, the direction that the air is flowing. So I'm gonna have the fan, uh, fan sitting um, yeah, behind, so the, the radiator sitting here and then the, the two fans behind that sort of uh, sucking air uh, and hopefully, yeah, alleviating uh, the heat from the, the radiator in this direction, and then the, that these two fans will then blow the hot air out. That's the plan. So step one in all of this is, we just remove this, is we need to mount a back plate. Um, so uh, I've moved this these four stubs into the inner position, which is the correct position for the CPU I'm using. Uh, if it were an uh, AMD CPU, I needed to move them to the outer position. So I'm just going to flip the cabinet so we can mount this from the back of the motherboard. Okay, next step is to mount these four standoffs in the holes that we now have provided by the backplate. And to do that, I'm just gonna lift the cabinet a little bit because I need to apply pressure to the backplate while I'm doing this so I'm not pushing the backplate out again. So now the four standoffs have been mounted on the backplate, attaching it, yeah, uh, on the front side of the motherboard, attaching it to the backplate. And we can now actually, um, yeah, we could now mount the, the pump 
but I'm not going to wait with that until I have I have all the radiators um, attached. So let's do that uh, and then do the pump installation afterwards because that also means we we are going to apply the the thermal paste to, to the CPU. Okay, so this is what I ended up with, and I actually changed my mind. Um, I was talking about mounting the fans here. So this plate here, you can see the two uh, knob screws. They um, they allowed me to mount the two fans on uh, this plate, and then uh, so the fans are actually sitting both uh, here on top of each other, and uh, then the the radiator goes here. So this makes for a more clean look within the, the case, I think. So that's what I went for. Uh, so now we need to actually get the pump uh, mounted on the CPU and yeah, attach the, the wires for, uh, for that. Okay, here we go. So this is the thermal paste that will make sure that the bond is as tight as we want it. Yep. And then we have these to make sure that it really... Okay, so we got it mounted and we got the cables going from the pump to uh, respectively a USB power connector, a SATA connector and the CPU fan uh, connector. So uh, really what uh, would be the log logical next step would be to mount the PSU. So. Uh, Let's get on that. Okay, let's talk PSUs. So this is uh, what we call a modular PSU. By modular, it means that instead of having a gigantic uh, bunch of uh, wires, uh, you actually have uh, only the main power uh, to the motherboard wires, and then you have these connectors, and then it comes with a big set of different type of connectors depending on what you want. This makes it uh, so you only use the actual connectors that you uh, you need and don't end up having additional wires that you have to tuck away. So spend a little extra bucks if you have it uh, to get a modular PSU. So now we just need to slide the PSU here into the bottom of the case. And then there are four screws that we need to, uh, yeah, to attach. So with the PSU mounted, we are gonna attach the main power connector and the secondary to respectively this and this. So I'll think I'll reroute this uh, from behind so it doesn't go across the motherboard. Okay, so we got our main power connector there and the secondary power connector there connected, right. So now we need to attach the hard drive and connect the fans to the power and we should pretty much be able to try it out. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is attach one of these to the PSU so we get some SATA power plugs. Then we can attach the water coolers uh, SATA connection to this. We turn it the right way. Like so. Cool. Okay. 
then we need to power the graphics card adapter. Let's just see what we need here. So it's these two that we are looking for to do something with. And what do we need for that? We need two eight port. So see, it's quite, quite clever here because instead of having just a six and an eighth, you have a sixth and then this, if you need an eighth, very clever. There we go. Yep, let's connect that up. Then we need to connect our This is all the fan power cables here. So we need to just tidy that up a little bit. And here we have the two power uh, connectors to the, to the fans that are sitting on the uh, water cooler radiator. And then we have these two, which are the case fans. And this is the SATA connector to our um, water cooler. That we just need to make sure is like that. There we go. So with the graphics card also powered, we just really need to um, connect our SSD and we should be ready to take this sucker for a spin. Uh, let's see where we want that. Right, so here's our SATA port connector and we need to get that fixed to one of these connectors. I'll just take the bottom one that should be the one that will take up the least space. We are just doing a last sanity check if I can see any wires that <laughs> are not attached that should be. Everything looks good. Uh, let's go power this baby up. Ladies and gentlemen, it works and on the first attempt. So you might be able to tell on just on the top here. There we go, that I put a USB drive in one of the USB connectors with a Windows USB boot drive and I'm doing the default Windows installation. So that's gonna take a while. So yeah, you, the fortunate part about you, you're gonna miss that part. I have to, I have to wait an hour for, until this, uh, this stuff is finished. This is how the end result looks without the glass plate. Uh, you see that I'm quite happy with how the cable management is within the the case that's visible. You, very few wires are actually running across anything, so you get a nice and clean look uh, from the from the inside the case, uh, even with the radiator sitting here to the right. If we take a look at the the back side of the case, uh, you can really see here how the the cable management management system in this ca case is uh, superior because uh, you get a very nice routing of these cables and when you use a, just a little bit of time on, on stripping these uh, wires together they uh, they really sit nice and tight and you also see here the SSC drive has been mounted on the back side. 
from the font side, you will be the, uh, you can see the case turn, uh, the whole system turned on here with the RGB effects from the cooler, the memory and the motherboard and the graphics card. Hope you enjoyed this guys. Have a great day.